Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are going to look at going from Blender 2.8 to Godot. Now, I'm not going to actually show you the process of modeling or animating inside of Blender. I actually did that in this earlier video where I did Blender to Godot using Blender 2.79, and the rules are more or less true. In this particular case, though, I'm going to use an already created and animated model and show you the different opportunities and options for getting your model out of Blender and into the Godot game engine. Now, there are a couple of strengths and weaknesses of each approach we're going to look at today, so without further ado, let us jump in. Now, first off, we are going to be using this model. It's available from Sketchfab. I will have it in the link below. Uh, it is called Leku, and it is from f him. <laughs> this guy. Uh, and also what we would ideally be using for this import is better Collada, but this does not appear to be working right now. This is the ideal exporter for doing DAE files out, but you'll see from the, the notes here, it just does not seem to be working for anybody right now, including myself. So normally you would go to the Godot page and download better Collada here, uh, right here. Unfortunately, it does not seem to currently be working, but don't let that turn you off. We have a number of different options. So here is the file. I've downloaded it from uh, Sketchfab. You can see it comes down uh, as a zip file with a GLTF and a bin file and a directory full of the textures. That's going to be important later on. And you see right here, we are inside of Blender and this guy has an animation attached. You can see it is textured. There we go, an animation going on. Very simple, very straightforward, but that is what we are working with. And now what we wanna do is get this model animated and textured and into Blender. Now the first option would have been OBJ or Wavefront Object Format. And that's mostly for static meshes. So if you did like a building that wasn't animated and was had a single texture on it, uh, Object Format might be a good choice. In this particular case, it is not. So we're going to ignore that completely. So that leaves us three different formats, Collada, FBX, and uh, GLTF, which is the format this is actually in. And to be actually be a bit of a spoiler warning, if you actually just go ahead and download this GLTF file here, uh, this guy right there, you can drop it straight into um, the Godot game engine and it will work right away. But in this case, we're showing you how to go from uh, Blender to Godot, so obviously I'm not going to do that that way. So first off, let us show you um, Collada and one of the big problems with Collada. So first we're gonna need a new project. So let me just find my new version of Godot. Now, another thing I want you to point out here is notice I'm using a nightly build. Well, that is because Godot added FBX support in 3.2, the next version. So if you want to use Godot 3, if you want to use the FBX file format, you're going to need to use the, one of the nightly builds. Or if you're watching this at some point in the future where 3.2 has already shipped, you're good to go. So here, we're going to call this blend to Godot. I already done one once, so we're going to go ahead and create that. It's an OpenGL ES3 project and create it. All right, so there we go. Uh, first thing we're going to do is illustrate um, the GLTF export. And this one is probably the ugliest, but the best, if that makes any sense. GLTF is the format of the future and it seems to actually work the best. So say you've got your um, scene coming out of Blender. Blender's GLTF export has a bit of an issue and I'll show you exactly what that is. But here we are, we got our scene exported. You just come in and go file, export, and just choose GLTF 2.0 right here. Now you've got a number of different options for it. So let's go to our new project. So that is blend to Godot 2. Uh, we're gonna call it GLTF so we can make sense of which one we've got. And then you've got a couple of options for how you wanna configure it. First off, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you set the Y axis as up. So that is the up vertical axis. That's this green one right here. Uh, so that it translates to, to work between the two systems. By default, it should be set to Y up in this case, uh, but in that case, you're good to go. We're gonna go GLTF binary, and this one's pretty straightforward. We don't really need to do anything else. The defaults are all pretty solid. So what you're gonna do is just go ahead, pick that, drop it into your folder, and click export. Now here is where the problem kicks in. You notice how my cursor just went away? Well, let me just bring up my system resource manager here and show you something. So here is the memory usage of Blender. And this was erroring constantly for me because I had virtual memory turned off. I just have my 16 gigs of RAM and I never really go beyond that. So I have no swap space enabled and it crashed hard. So I do not have any idea why Blender takes this outrageous amount of memory up and time, frankly, to do these exports. But if you try to do a GLTF export with a non-trivial model and it crashes, it's probably because you are running out of memory. So go in and make sure if you are using Windows that you have swap drive space 
available. If you don't know how to do that, since we're sitting here waiting for this anyways, I will show you the process. Go to your computer, go to properties, like so. Go to bop, 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 advanced system settings right here. Uh, go to performance and then go to advanced and change it so virtual memory is set on one drive so there is a page file available. Again, I was crashing with this particular model every single time I tried to do an export with GLTF. Now this is gonna run for a while. At 647 at this point, I'm just gonna pause it and I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, so here we are, it is done. And we are talking like four minutes has elapsed to make that export happen. So it's one of those things to be aware of. And I'm assuming that this is a Blender 2.8 bug. However, the GLTF export is by far and away the best result. So we exported it directly into uh, our Godot project here. So Godot is now gonna go ahead and import it. Uh, this can take an intermediate amount of time, but nowhere near as much as the export took there. And you'll see we now have this GLB file. So I could go ahead, I could drop one into the scene if we wanted to create it, or I could double click it and open it directly. Now, the reason why this is so useful is we'll open it up and we'll see a couple things. Now, first off, it is huge and it's on the wrong axis. So you can fix that easy enough by grabbing the root and doing a transform if you so wish, or you can rotate it this way. But the cool thing or the most important thing here is when we grab the uh, animation player here, you'll see all of our textures came in pretty much perfectly. It looks exactly like what we were dealing with in Blender and our animations work just fine. So GLTF, there's some huge performance export problem out of Blender 2.8, at least as of right now, because it was just released. And it may just be with this particular model file I used, because uh, any trivial thing works trivially, but we don't live in a trivial world. So this is a good example of a real world, real polygon count that you'll deal with. So that export speed hopefully will be improved over time. Now, if you come back here to Blender, you'll notice on the export, we had a couple of options. Um, I'm not gonna export it again though because that took forever. But you'll see here, if you come down here, you've got, again, the Y up, but that seemed to be kind of being ignored to be honest. Um, but for the most part, you wanna keep everything set as default. There's not a lot of magic going on with the GLTF2 export. Again, I do recommend it though, if you can do it, because first off, I think GLTF is the future. I think that performance issue will be worked out and the end result is as close to the beginning result as you are going to see in these tests. So that is export via GLTF2. Um, and you can, you can export it in multiple different formats. It doesn't change the speed, by the way. So that seems to be a problem regardless to which format you pick. So we also come here, if we go to export, uh, the other options are Collada. Uh, Collada, we normally, again, would have used the better Collada exporter, but in this case, we don't have access to it. And this is problematic because, so let's go back to our folder. We'll call this one Collada. And you see we got our options down here as well. We go to the main. One thing you can do is selection only, so it only exports the currently selected mesh. I'm gonna export the whole scene into this guy. We wanna do Z forward and Y up as our transformations. Uh, we want to copy in the textures, and that should be about it. So we're gonna go ahead and export this guy out now. You're gonna notice that the Collada export is a heck of a lot quicker from Blender. Um, it should only take a matter of a couple of more seconds, maybe 15, 20 seconds total, I think, but we'll let this run. Um, and it's going out, so there you go. You can see it exported out. Coincidentally, this is a 25,000 face or 25,000 triangle model. So it's not exceedingly complicated, but the export is done. Godot over here should be importing it as we speak. And we are going to see a major flaw here. And when the better Collada exporter gets fixed, this should be fixed as well. And this is the animations on this guy. So here we got Collada is now imported. I'm gonna double click, we'll open that guy up. So here is our model. Uh, I guess I should set it to minus Z, so it's actually facing in the right direction. But you see, we at least got it orientated as we wanted. I believe we also, when we export this guy out using Collada, uh, we can do a generalized scale. Oh no, you can't. Hmm, I thought you could scale directly there. I guess only in FBX. Okay, so. Ignore that, so you're gonna have to scale it once it comes in. You've also got some options when you import it on any of these imports. Um, you can change how the, the things are brought in. For the most part, you're gonna leave all those things alone. Uh, but what you might wanna do is a root scale right here. And that means that every time you import it again, it will have the smaller scale. So if I set this down to 0 0.1, this guy will be substantially smaller. All right, so that looks really good. It came in very fast. The textures are all brought in. It looks exactly what we want, right? All right, so let's go back to our scene. Over here, let's grab our animation player and play. Ooh, okay. So that 
that is a flaw. <laughs> so our animation doesn't exactly look exactly like what we'd want to. And again, if the specialized Collada exporter works, I find that this happened in Blender 2.79. And if you used better Collada, you did not get these animation artifacts. So obviously, if you are doing animations, uh, you may run into some issues with your Collada export, which once again, if you use GLTF as your export, you do not run into. And also, don't forget, your mileage may vary based off of you know, how your file is created. And if you do go back and watch that video I posted earlier, it actually shows you how to configure an animation in Blender so that it plays nice with the Godot game engine. So do be checking that out if you're working from scratch. But if you find that your Blender exported Collada animations have this distortion, it's probably, uh, again, because of the exporter and you want to get better Collada, but unfortunately, it does not work yet. All right, so that leaves us one last export option, and that is FBX. Now, once again, if you want to use FBX, you need to be running 3.2 or later. That's when it was added via the ass imp uh, importer support. Um, that's asset importer, short formed as ass imp. So what we can do is file export, and then FBX. Now, this one is a little problematic. It Again, this is probably the nature of exporting files in 3D in general. This is always the weakest link. So the fact that we're running into these problems is pretty much expected, to be honest. So what we want to do, we want to have negative Z forward. We want to have Y up. Um, this one, you turn it on or off depending on your results. But the key thing, when I export this guy out the first time, so we'll go ahead and we'll say... Um, copy. So we want to copy our uh, our textures into our FBX export. In theory, that should work. In reality, it's not going to, but in theory, it should. Now, the nice thing you notice is it was very quick on both ends. So now we have FBX here. Let's open that one up. And all right, so we, we're much smaller going in here. It looks really good. All right, so everything is pretty shiny. We got a lot of lights going on here, but our animation player, and it worked without problem actually. So what I found in the past is this was problematic for me. So FPX is actually uh, working the best. The only problem is we've got all the lighting that came in with it. And that's why we've got this really weird lighting going on. So if we delete the light that we brought in from the scene, you'll notice it looks a lot more like normal. Now, another thing you saw is this guy actually came in a lot smaller. And that's because when I did the export before, and I didn't show you this on the export, you'll see here, I set the scale to 10% of its full size. So we can set this back up to one and we would get a giant when we do the export. Now, one of the things I found though in the past, and I'm shocked that this one works. So I'm gonna see if this actually is the reason. So go here, go to the folder we were in. No, it's not there. Okay, so for some reason, this failed constantly for me in the past in that I didn't get textures when I did an FBX export. And this is tested across three different machines. And if you do get that, if your textures do not come in, just make sure that you copy them in from your, so just copy this folder into your project. Um, and then when you do your export as FBX, instead of doing copy, do it as relative pathing. And then it will just find the textures when it is imported into the Godot engine. So again, I have had very random results with the FBX export. I've had it come in with no armature. I've had it come in with no, um, textures and then I've had to manually bring the textures in and set everything to relative. But in this particular case, FBX import, which is the new thing in 3.2, was by far and away the quickest. Now, again, one last thing to demonstrate, and I should have kind of, I guess I could have shown this all along. Here is the original project that we downloaded. So I'm going to go ahead and grab all of this stuff. So this is the download that you would have gotten. And as I mentioned earlier, we could have just dropped this guy into uh, our project right off the hop. Uh, like so, let it import over here. Oh, I'm gonna have a name collision here. I think they're both called GLTF. No, I think it's called, we'll see what it comes in as. What did I bring that in as? Scene, okay, it's gonna have a different name. So we're gonna let that import it. This is a straight out, just downloaded from Sketchfab, no Blender involved at all. Um, this will download and import and just work. So then this is why GLTF2 format to me ultimately is my number one choice. So we'll let this do the import. It seems that it's processing all of the textures separately, so it is a little bit slower. Uh, so I'm gonna pause this while it continues. Okay, so that only just took a couple more seconds. So here we go, back to our root scene. You'll see scene.glf2 was instanced, and then boom, there it is. Now, what thing you'll notice is it's gigantic as well. And we'll just go ahead and scale that down to 10% of its current size, and it's still gigantic. So we could actually go down to probably 
0.01, and there is our guy, quite small, lovely, but ready to work right off the hop. Now we got this, ah, there we go, it's gone. Uh, but right away, we could open that guy up, open anyways, and it has full animation support right out of the box. There's the backwards on the animation. There's forward playing on the animation, and there you go. So we didn't actually have to go, in this particular case, through Blender at all. But as you saw, there are different artifacts and different things that come from it. Ultimately, I would recommend GLTF support as long as you can put up with the Blender performance bugs that are in place right now. And i got to imagine that those will be resolved very quickly, and hopefully they only happen on certain files. But the end-to-end -end GLTF just seems to work quite well. You get animations, you get textures, you get everything. As of right now, Collada seems to be about the worst format, and FBX seems to be actually the quickest format, but it was also the most fragile. So when you're trying to export your FBX out, let me just quickly show you the settings I used there. So once again, I did that standardized scaling. We did negative Z as the forward axis and Y as the up axis, meaning once again, Y, Z. And then we've got... Uh, I got copy as the path for the materials. Under geometry, I did apply modifiers. Under armatures, I have add leaf bones as the only option, and then default settings for animation. And I hate to say it, but a lot of this just kind of comes around to playing and playing and playing with it until it works. Now, the most common problem, as I mentioned earlier on, is sometimes you just don't get textures, in which that case, do it as uh, relative pathing, copy the textures into your project, and it will all work out just fine. So as you see, there are problems with every single mechanism you're going to use. You can get really good results into Godot, um, from Blender 2.8, but there are some seething pains. I don't know if the better Collada exporter is actually going to be updated fully for Blender 2.8. Hopefully it is, and that becomes another option there. But it's really looking like GLTF is the future, and it's cool with Blender 3.2 that we're also going to have that FBX option. Now, do keep in mind that FBX option is, once again, only in Blender 3.2. So if you're watching this as of about when I'm recording this in early August, you will have to use the development build to get that functionality. All right, that's it. Uh, that is the various different ways of getting your assets from Blender into Godot uh, and the strengths and weaknesses of each one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do my best to help. All right, talk to you all later. Goodbye.